If you charge a liquid to a few thousand volts, something amazing happens. This is a normal neutral drop falling on a hard surface. See the giant splash? And this is the charge drop, no splash. Today I'm going to show you an amazingly recent discovery and talk about why charged liquids don't splash. Last month I showed you a fascinating and surprising phenomenon where a drop of liquid hits a hard surface in a vacuum. It doesn't splash, it just wets the surface. This blew my mind so I made a whole video about why this happens. However, the story didn't end there. The ability for drops to not splash in a vacuum was discovered in 2005. However, just recently in April 2025, a novel paper was published that showed that electrically charged drops also don't splash. So after I read this, I knew that I had to do a follow-up video on this to see if this were actually true. Do charged drops actually have no splash? And if that's the case, why? Again, just like the vacuum scenario, I would assume that they would splash more if they were charged. The reason I say this is because normally when you charge a liquid, it sprays everywhere. In fact, I made a whole video about a concept that proposed using electrosprays with ferrofluid for space flight. See how the peaks of ferrofluid just spray off in a fine mist? This happens because the drops become electrically charged, but then they have the same charge as their neighbor, so they are electrically repelled. So they fly off and split into even finer drops that are all repelled from each other. So charged liquids like to make tiny drops. So why would a charged liquid not splash? Well, let's actually try this experiment ourselves and see if this is actually true. In order to do this, first I have to decide how I'm going to charge my drops. My go-to source of high static charge is my Wimshurst machine. A few cranks and it instantly charges these two cylinders to hundreds of thousands of volts. But I don't need that much voltage, so I'll just barely turn the crank to keep the voltage lower. Then I'll hook one of these electrodes to a needle that's connected to a syringe full of isopropyl alcohol. This way I can charge the drops as they leave the syringe. Now in order to make the charge uniform on the drop, I have the other electrode connected to a copper ring. This way when I charge the drops they get attracted to the ring and fall straight through. Now this ring isn't exactly needed, it just makes it so that I can direct the drop and get it to fall where I want. Okay, so as I charge it, you can see the needle's positive, the ring is negative. But here's the problem, if I crank it too hard, then the drops just make a fine mist of alcohol, essentially electrospraying alcohol into the air. So I have to charge the drops up just enough to be charged, but not so much that they electrospray everywhere. In order to do that, I'll let a drop form on the end right until it's about to fall off. And then I'll slowly turn the crank on the Wimshurst machine and it'll charge the drop. This extra charge will make it be repelled from the bulk liquid and drop off with the charge on it. Now this took some trial and error of me turning the crank at just the right speed while getting just the right amount of liquid on the end, but eventually I got it. Now let's see if this actually works. First let's film a normal neutral drop falling off at about 400 millimeters through the air. We get a nice big splash, but now let's charge a drop and let it fall. The splash completely disappears. That is so crazy. It doesn't matter whether or not I charge the drop positively or negatively as well. This is a positively charged drop and this is a negatively charged drop. The same thing happens. So whenever a drop gets a slight charge on it, the splash disappears. Now I'm not able to vary the charge precisely, but in the research paper they show an amazing correlation of splash with charge. The higher the charge, the less splash there is. The unit you see here, NC, is actually nanocoulombs. It's a measure of how much charge is on the drop. So with less than 0.1 nanocoulombs, the splash disappears. Now why would this happen? Well, as the drop hits the surface, the lifting lamella naturally forms due to trapped air beneath the liquid. In a neutral drop, this lamella spreads and forms tiny drops. But in a charged drop, there's an additional force pulling the lamella down. The charges are attracted to the surface because we're dropping them on glass. Glass is a dielectric, 
So when you put something that's charged near a dielectric, it pulls the charge toward it because the dielectric molecules rotate and point their opposite end charge towards the charge. This is the same reason a charged balloon can stick to a neutral wall. So this electric force pulls the lamella down and makes it just glide across the surface with no air in between. But if this mechanism were true, then that would mean that if the drop fell on a different surface that isn't dielectric like glass, then it would still splash even when it's charged. So let's try to drop a charged drop on a conductive surface like this metal plate. But before we continue, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, Henson Shaving. Henson has to be one of the coolest razor companies out there. They used to be a family-run aerospace business that actually built parts on the Mars rover and ISS. Because of this background, they know how to make extremely precise razors. The Henson AL13 razor works so well because it has incredibly tight tolerances that hold the blade at almost a perfect 30 degree angle. Their razors are precise CNC machined to give you an exceptionally close shave every time with no irritation. Built with such high quality, a Henson razor should last most people a lifetime, making it a very sustainable choice right down to the fully plastic free packaging. The blades cost only about 10 cents each. And when you compare the lifetime cost to other razors, the Henson AL13 comes out much cheaper. So if you want to try out the Henson AL13, go to hensonshaving.com slash actionlab and use the code actionlab to receive 100 free blades with the purchase of the razor. That's three to four years worth of shaves. Just be sure both items are in your cart for the code to work. Now let's get back to our experiment. Okay, let's charge the drop and see if it splashes. Whoa, it still splashed. That means that as soon as the charge hits the metal surface, the drop loses its surface charge. So it isn't attracted to the hard surface anymore. So the lamella spreads out and makes a splash like normal. This is crazy. I can't believe this was just barely discovered. This is so important. For example, most of the time drops have some amount of charge on them. They're not usually neutral. For example, raindrops in a thunderstorm have charge. So this would be important to know how raindrops spread fungus or mold spores when they hit. Or when you sneeze and that drop hits a surface, does that make tiny micro droplets during a splash? Or does it not because there's a slight charge on your body when you sneeze? Also in printers, the drops are charged. So this knowledge would help to know how drops splash in a printer. This is crazy. That means that whether or not tiny drops go shooting off in every direction has to do with the amount of tiny static charge on the drops or on your body or the person that's doing it. This makes splashing even more complicated than it already is even with neutral drops. So I wanna know if you guys can think of other applications where this would come in handy to know and control. Let me know in the comments section what you guys come up with. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.